So fast forwarding a few years, you'll know that in the Mexican episodes recently, there's been a couple of times where I've said that we've learned things now that we didn't know back in the time that we were traveling. And that all comes down from uh, my partner, Lorena, who is Mexican. We have kept in contact ever since uh, we met and, you know, happy days, etc., etc. I won't get too, uh, you know, romantic with that. But point being, it ended up that in 2020, I headed back over to Mexico. Uh, this was just before COVID. I will point that out very clearly. This is just before COVID. Yucatan part two. We decided that, or I decided that I wanted to see a lot more of the area. The, now I say Yucatan, I'm also taking into account, uh, my apologies, uh, the Quintana Roo district, uh, which is the uh, on the east coast of the area. And that's where you've got Cancun, Playa del Carmen, uh, Tulum, uh, you know, that, that area as well. And also see a little bit more of Campeche. So what we decided to do was almost do a, a very big circle around that area. And it would be a case of seeing a lot of sites that we hadn't seen before. Now, Lorena it lives in and around Mexico City. Uh, as uh, Without sounding too funny, I'm sure it, it sounds like every single Mexican just lives in and around Mexico City. It's a huge city, not been yet, but it's a ginormous city. But she's also done quite a few experiences, uh, visited different places in her own country, uh, as you would do. So she'd already been to places like Chichen Itza, Cancun, bits and bobs like that. But she hadn't been to a lot of other places in the area, just like the most you know, tourist, famous touristy ones. So we devised a little route. We basically both flew into Cancun. Of course, she flew from Mexico City. I flew in from London. We met there. We got the bus straight over to Valladolid retracing steps here and then from there it would be to go to Merida again retracing steps down to Campeche again retracing steps uh, and then from there it would be a case of going to uh, Spuhil which is right in the Reserva de la Biosfera Calacmol uh, Calacmol the Calacmol site as we later found out just extraordinary it is probably the best way to summarize it we then uh, head across into uh, very briefly, Chetumal, uh, just north of Belize, and then Bacala, a, a lovely, wonderful place by a lake, uh, before heading up to Tulum, then Puerto Morelos, which is just south of Cancun, uh, then before uh, seeing our time out uh, in Cancun. It'd be about a five, six week trip. But in a nutshell, I'm not going to go over places that we've been to already, but we've done things a bit differently. Because uh, again, I'm not this time, remember, I'm not with Aaron, so how Aaron and I travel is going to be slightly different to how uh, Lorena and I travel. But in Via the Lead, uh, it's a bit sentimental. We uh, certainly, well, I certainly revisited the place where uh, the famous yellow sauce incident happened. I remembered exactly where it was, I remembered uh, where in the Mercado that this place was, so we went back there. Now, dangerously so, uh, Montezuma's Revenge Part 2. Uh, of course, having come over from England, uh, they always say, you know, don't, you know, drink the local water, uh, you know, don't have drinks of ice in. So I went straight in with a, um, a juice. They like a good juice in the morning, do the Mexicans. Went straight in there with juice and spent the next two days in bed because uh, it was coming out of every orifice imaginable. But it helped to reset my system. I know you're thinking, Rob, that's TMI. I'm just letting you know that's what happened because this is travel. You're going to get the good, the bad and the ugly. And that was certainly um, not a great way to start uh, that journey. But rather than you know visit Chichen Itza because we've already done it, we headed up, uh, visited a couple of Maya sites, uh, visited Ek Balam, which is a wonderful uh, taxi ride out of either lead. Up there, spent a few hours there on that site. Thanks to uh, Montezuma's Revenge, a couple of days have been wasted in Valladolid. It also gave a good experience of, of trying to work uh, as well as uh, be traveling. And the reason for that is fast forward from 2015 when we finished that journey up to now. We've now got a property business, we've now got podcast stuff going on, you know, we're dealing with investors, dealing with projects. And of course, you kind of get this theory that oh, you know, if you're dealing with all that, you've got to be in the same country, etc., etc. It was also part of this dispelling the myth as well, which worked out really well. 
From by the lead, it was uh, heading straight into Merida. Uh, we stayed in a based ourselves in Merida for about 10 days, actually. And the reason we stayed in there for 10 days was uh, for a variety of reasons. We wanted to head to um, uh, do the route of Puk, which was again going down to Ushmal. Also wanted to head to um, a place called Ismal, uh, which is basically most of the buildings are yellow. It's just like a yellow town, but also has the second largest atrium in the world uh, after the Vatican City. Uh, fun fact for you. So I wanted to visit places like Ushamal, uh, visit uh, other various um, sites in and around the area. Uh, so visiting my sites such as Mayapan, heading up to the beach at Progresso, heading over to um, Selestun in the uh, the west of the Yucatan. Uh, the, the biosphere of the reserva there is very famed for flamingos. Uh, again, Ruta Puk, all, all these sorts of things. Now, rather than go traveling around and this and that, we just packed out an Airbnb basically for uh, 10 nights. And that was cool. Uh, that was um, yeah, a nice experience. Ismail, as I said, we went there for briefly for a day. Uh, it was, again, it's just a wonderful yellow town. You've got, you can still see a few of the old uh, Maya temples, fortresses. You can have a good walk around. Few nice museums there to find out more about my heritage. Uh, loads of different archaeological sites, uh, bits and things, bits and pieces to do. The Convento di San Antonio di Padua, that is the convent where the second largest atrium in the world is. And in order to get round from A to B, uh, and again because of a blend of, you know, Lorena being fluent in Spanish, surprise, surprise we decided to just use a bunch of collectivos. So yeah, basically going out for the day, collectivos, great methods of transport anywhere in the world. And again, relatively inexpensive. They're fast, they're efficient, they're inexpensive. It's a very easy way to get around. We wanted to try and get involved in, in what potentially life would be like, should we say, in, in the Yucatan if we just ever decided to move over there and start a new life there. Also visited the Maya World Museum in Merida. Now, I'm pretty sure that when Aaron and I were there, this place wasn't open. I think it's a very recent attraction. Uh, so we uh, ended up getting the minibus up there. And, and much to my surprise, and I laugh at this to this day, we got up to the ticket office. Of course, the lady at the ticket office has taken uh, one look at, at Lorena, realized that she's probably from Mexico and given her her discounted entrance. Uh, and I just turned around and said, ah, so I'm here, Canada, también. I'm Mexican also. I had no idea on me to prove that. Of course, I was I was lying. I was trying it on. Again, I've still got in my head uh, a dislike for the fact that you've got Mexican prices and then you've got gringo prices. I'm not a big fan of that. I still had it in my head from all those years ago. So I said, ah, soy mexicana también. And to my surprise, utter surprise, maybe because I said it in Spanish, I don't know. Um, I got a Mexican entrance fee given to me for the uh, the Grand Maya Museum, uh, which made my day. Uh, and still, I still love saying that to this day. Made my day. Awesome stuff. You're probably thinking, Rob, what's an extra 50, 100 pesos? Yeah, hindsight, you're probably right. But uh, I tried it. It worked. Happy days. Whenever you're in uh, Merida, there, there are, there's a lot of museums to go to. Uh, we also went to the Anthropological, Anthropological I think it is, uh, museum as well, which is off the Paseo Monteo, uh, as well as uh, you know, some other history museums, bits and bobs like that too. We spent a couple of nights in Celestun uh, to visit the Flamingo. So we went on a, a private tour, uh, which involved getting up ridiculously early in the morning uh, to be taken on this uh, private tour around Celestun and, and all the reserves. There were flamingos there, which were quite nice. Not a ridiculous amount, uh, but there were there were some there. And again, the things that I'd seen before, I wasn't overly bothered, but it's something that Lorena really wanted to see. She wanted to see flamingos and you know that was that achieved. And the arch enemy, oh yes, the arch enemy was on the beach the Playa Sur Celestun and the Playa Norte Celestun, the North and South Beach, and the Little Pier, as well as uh, the Moele, or Moele, the Pescadores Celestun, and the Little Pier, the Pelican. The arch enemy was there. They were all sat on the pier in Celestun, 
and it was like it well i say the i say the term lightly it was like a mexican standoff the pelicans that i and me maybe it's the same pelican from the galapagos i don't know i don't trust these things they're looking at me but i'm looking at the pelicans we know there's a war happening here who's going to give him first the pelicans gave him first uh, they spotted some fish swimming in the uh, sea and fucked off so yeah I'm, I'm going to take that as victory pelicans won rob won happy days but that not a lot going on in celestine what we found we were getting into uh, a, a wonderful routine of uh, yeah i was basically following lorena of how she would do things normally so you're eating your breakfast at your local markets eating your bocadillos eating your tacos talking of which actually uh, to this day she will maintain that uh, the cochinita pibil uh, that we had in Valladolid uh, and, and this was just from a street vendor in the middle of nowhere what well, no sorry this was from a street vendor who came out of the middle of nowhere but it was in and around the, one of the main plazas she will still maintain that is the finest cochinita pibil she's ever had and one of the best foods she's ever had in her lifetime and for a, a Mexican to say that it must have been very good. I won't lie, it was an orgasmic cochinita pibil. So good, I think I had about four of them. D delightful. I also got uh, introduced properly to hojata. We'd had some hojata in Palenque, Aaron and myself, uh, with the green sauce fiasco, but I didn't know a lot about it. I was, ended up, that was my drink of choice rather than Coca-Cola this time through this segment of Mexico. Again, being based in Merida, we headed up to Progreso, uh, which is on the north coast of the Yucatan. Uh, Progresso has, I believe, the longest pier in the world. Uh, reason for that is it's got a massive road uh, that stretches out for quite a few kilometres. It's a big port for that reason. It's also quite a popular tourist uh, place to go because uh, it's uh, a deep water port that can hold, you know, these massive cruise ships that you see going around. Progresso is also quite popular with the more affluent people from Merida. Uh, they will go up to Progresso for their weekends. You know, it's the beach, happy days. We went up there for a few hours. I mean, it was a nice, joyous day. I think we uh, ended up having a, a four hour lunch uh, in one of the restaurants overlooking, overlooking the beach. Of course, we purposely went on a day where there wasn't a cruise ship. So apparently it's incredibly manic when a cruise ship does arrive arrive into progresso but a nice place worth checking out if you're ever in and around the area and the other lasting memory from merida was the ruta puk so the ruta puk bus was running it was on a sunday uh, lorena didn't quite believe it at the time that such a thing would exist but i was adamant that it did uh, it took us two bus stations to get to before we found out that it existed we never nearly never made the trip itself uh, it turns out it can be quite difficult to hail a cab at seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday in Merida. In fact, there's naffle traffic on the roads that time in the morning. Uh, by the time her ladyship had uh, found an app to book a taxi, uh, we got lucky, got to the bus station with about two minutes to spare. I forget some of the other sites, to be honest, that we went to uh, that day. Uh, the highlight really was a smell at the end. Uh, the, the Temple of the Magician was something I'd wanted to see for years just because it's architecturally fantastic. The whole day was wonderful. It, you know, it's incredibly hot. It, there was a lot going on. You stopped off at all these different sites. Sometimes you just didn't stop off there for a long enough period of time. Uh, some of the times we were on a few sites was they could have been ex extended by a little bit, even by you know, an extra 20 minutes. Um, some of it felt a bit rushed. Ushmal itself, uh, a lot of people there, uh, a lot, a lot of people there, uh, just at the time of day that we arrived. And it, apparently that is a thing you do on a Sunday. But yeah, the Palacio del Gobernador, a big building there, uh, the Grand Pyramid, yeah, the Temple of the Magician, uh, just Google, Google image that, it, it, just absolutely fantastic. I'm lost of words thinking about it. Uh, but the Ruta Puk was really good. Um, I do remember one of the sites was called Kaba. Uh, that was, again, on the Ruta Puk. Uh, the Grand Pyramid there was quite funky. Uh, also, the uh, El Palacio on top of the hill there was cool too. And bear in mind, when you're in this part of the world, you're not really that close to bodies of water. 
yes, you might have had the odd cenote here and there, but again, the Maya had come up with a way of storing all the, the rainwaters uh, from, from the wet season uh, using these big you know, drums and reservoirs on their sites, and that provided year-round water. Again, just absolutely fantastic little bits and pieces like that. I also went to Mayapan. I took a colleague, Tivo, one day to go down to the ruins at Mayapan. Mayapan's a, a, a really good site because apparently it was the old, uh, you know, capital city of, of one of the late Maya periods, if I'm not mistaken. The good thing about that site is there was hardly anyone there. Uh, you have to get a couple of uh, collectivos to get there. Uh, thankfully, the collectivo driver on the way knew that we were going to the site. He wasn't going to the site. He was going to the nearest small town, but uh, went out of his way to drop us off at the front gates, uh, which was really nice. What I'd say is if you're going around those sites, take some water and take a hat. We were severely underprepared that day, and it was a long walk back to the nearest town of Telchakio. Uh, that was a long few kilometres, I won't lie. Uh, and a great bottle of water when we finally got to the local shop. But those Collectivo journeys, again, it kind of yeah, gave us the experience of Yucatan life, things that you can see and do. It was very relaxed, it was peaceful. There wasn't a ridiculous amount going on. Uh, but there was also a hell of a lot to see as well. Thoroughly enjoyable, and it gave uh, me a, a more of an, an appreciation for the area as as well. And that was Marina. That was the first couple of weeks of, of our journey done uh, by the lead. We stayed there for five or six nights. Uh, again, a few of the nights have been taken away uh, because of Montezuma's revenge. And we purposely stayed, I think, 10 or 11 nights in Marina. Uh, but again, we use that as a base uh, for going to places like Progreso, Celestun, uh, Mayapan, doing the route to Puk as well. But next week, uh, when I do uh, the second part of the recap, around uh, this wonderful area of Mexico. Uh, we head down to Campeche. I uh, also head over to Calakmul, Xpujil, Chetamal, Bacala, and back up to Cancun. So join me next week. Hasta luego.